In this quick tutorial, I'm going to talk about two things. One of them I mentioned in my tutorial on doing variations, dealing with this eye icon versus the little screen icon that allows you to hide things and show things in the viewport. And the other thing happens to deal with a very simple little add-on that I absolutely love that sort of plugs a functionality hole dealing with collections and collection instances in Blender. So let's say we've got a very simple scene like this. We're just going to consider this a widget that we're working on. And we've got a couple of variations and we've modeled it right sort of in the center of our universe, which is very useful. And we want to arrange it and create sort of a circular pattern. So what we do is we come in, notice that I've got one of the options turned off. I've got option one and then I've got an option two. So let's say you're testing out ideas for part of your widget. Okay, so let's come over here and do an instance to scene. So we're going to use instances and we're going to pull this over because we're going to rotate these around the center point. So the uh, 3D cursor is already there, but the first thing that we're going to note is we're going to note that the instance has both options available, even though we had turned one of them off. So the collection instance shows you all your objects, even though we've turned one of them off here. And that's kind of a pain. You wouldn't know that there's a way to do this with the default configuration of Blender, but let's sort of charge ahead before we figure out how to correct that. Let's come into the top view, 3D cursors in the middle, period key, and we have the pivot point set to be at the 3D cursors location. Press option D and then the R key and then type in 22.5 degrees and return. And then we're just going to do shift R a bunch of times to replicate that. So this is our widget arrangement. And we've determined that we don't want to have the original widget visible. So we come over and we turn that off. So all we see are the collection instances. So this is a very real scenario that you can run into in the real world when you're constructing a complex object and you've got a source collection with the source data in it. But really all you're doing is you're having arrangements of it in the scene. And anytime you want to make a change, you have to go hunt back up to the collection and re-enable this and then come over here and make changes. And that can actually be really cumbersome when you're in a much more complex scene. It is frustrating because Blender doesn't give you any way of finding that original object. So you manually have to go hunt for it, which is a real pain. So it would be really nice if there was some way that we could just select any of the instances and jump into an environment where we can edit the original data. So what this simple little add-on does is it allows you to take any instance of a collection and jump in and edit the source in its own environment. So let's come over to preferences. It's an older style add-on, so I'm using 4.2, so they've got extensions. But what you do is you just come up here and do install from disk, and I'll put a link to this. And then install from disk, it'll turn on. And then what you do is you come over, if you don't have the uh, edit panel on the side here, these options available, notice down here under item, there is now an edit collection. And with any instance selected, edit that and it will drop in and show the original source collection data in its own environment back in the original location so you can go and edit that. When you're done, whenever you're done making changes, you can just return to the scene. Now let me tell you what it's doing sort of internally. Is it's actually creating a temporary brand new scene and moving that data over for us. So you can either just close this down, but there's a nice easy user interface element that wasn't in the very first video of the first version that I did, but you can just return to the scene and there it takes you back. So now that I've covered what this edit instance collection add-on does, let's jump back in now and take a look at our source data. Now there's that little panel that comes up that you can turn off. It basically just shows you that you can use a keyboard command to invoke it also, but let's come in and say that we want to only see one option or the other. So if I turn off option two, we can see that. But as soon as I come over here and return to the scene, we're still seeing everything. And that's kind of maddening. So let's jump back in. And you would think, well, 
Maybe we need to turn the eye icon off. But as soon as you come back in and return to the scene, it's still on, and that's maddening. But this is the default behavior of Blender. So let's jump back in one more time. And this is why I was saying that if you come up to filter, switch on the little, uh, the little view screen icon, which says disable in viewports, and turn off this dang little hide in viewport, you're going to notice it says temporary hide in the viewport. That temporary is important because it means we're hiding it here, but it's not going to retain that and hide it anywhere else. So as soon as we turn this off, now watch what happens. If I come over, let me collapse this and turn option two off. And then we return to the scene. Now we have that global control for that option. And so that is the difference between the default eye icon and this little screen icon as I show it. So now we can come over here and we can turn on the other option and return into the scene and that is retained. So this is animatable too and that's exactly why I used it in the tutorial on doing variations because you could animate that whereas you can't animate the little eye icon that allows you to enable and disable in a temporary sort of way. This is incredibly useful in very complex environments with both of these together, the edit instance collections and turning on this little screen icon, just solve some workflow problems. And that's kind of why I wanted to show you this. So anyway, I hope you found this to be useful.